Shalom, shalom, shalom. I had to go in here. And you know what? I was just thinking about something. I be doing these videos, and then sometimes I just have to keep coming right back and keep coming right back and keep coming right back. Sometimes things be based on the comments, and it shows because uh, we're gonna try to cover every area and be balanced as possible. And so, um. I don't want people to be misunderstood about anything that's being said. So sometimes when certain comments come up, it gives us an opportunity to go in there and close some uh, loopholes and some gaps. And that's the importance of uh, <coughs> feedback. We definitely need feedback because, uh, you know, and I think, like I said, don't claim to be no great wizard when it comes to the word or proclaim to be nobody's teacher. But one of the things... Uh, only way that any teacher can can uh, va evaluate the progress of her student is she had to see what their mindset is like after uh, a lesson or after a test. A test come to make you understand uh, whether people really understand what you've been teaching or not. So I just wanted to come on here right quick. Shalom Moshe, Shalom King. I wanted to come on here uh, right quick, just while I was thinking about it. Y'all don't have no Bible with me or nothing like that, but here's what we want to deal with, because we know that we're talking about how wisdom breeds uh, grief and sorrow. And so many people in the video, they was able to identify with the fact that uh, it had made them grievous and, and people was able to identify with with uh, being outcasted from your family and this, you know, in different scenarios like that, people not wanting to be involved or bother with you. That is where true wisdom kicks in, okay? Because what wisdom will do is wisdom will show you the exact strategy that you need to prevent these type of things from happening. Well, when the fa father is first imparting wisdom, these are the things that we go through. They make us grievous because he walking with us through the crooked ways. And then he'll return us to a straight path. Okay. And so just like we read uh, in the scripture uh, yesterday, that when you get wisdom, you will become a possession to your generation. And what that means is that it, it was once a time to where you experienced that grief and that sorrow. But it don't always stay like that. It's not designed to remain that way. Wisdom is not going to keep you separated from your family. Wisdom is not going to keep the friends and the people not wanting to be a bothered with you. Okay? When you get wisdom, that is in the process. Going through the process of acquiring wisdom, these things happen because now we are talking about what we love and, and everything. But we don't have a full understanding because we are just in pursuit of it. But once we get it, then we are returned, we are restored to a straight path to where we become now a possession to our generation. And what that means is that our generation will eventually come to appreciate you for the wisdom that you have. And many times, just because these things are happen, happening doesn't mean that it's because of wisdom that they're happening. Some of it could be because you might be being a tyrant in your house. You might be mandating everything that you learn, everything that you come across to the point to where you don't want to hear nothing nobody else got to say, and you just write about it, and you begin to drive people literally insane to the point to where they don't want to hear from you. That's not wisdom, okay? But many times, this is what happens while we're in our pursuit of wisdom. But now, once you experience that grief and experience that sorrow, now the Father will come back and start imparting wisdom to you as to how you are to deal with people. Because it used to be like that with me, but now it's like people love it when I come around. You know why? Because I... Through, through wisdom, it teaches you when to speak, when not to speak. Wisdom helps you to discern the understanding of the particular people that you're dealing with. So you discern whether they are able to handle this, whether they're not able to handle it. 
wisdom will show you, you know what I mean? Uh, th that's why, here's wisdom. Even a fool is considered wise when he holds his peace. When you get your hands on wisdom, everything that comes through your mind doesn't mean that it's for you to spit out of your mouth. Because there are some times that it would be better for you just to be quiet. If the words of truth that are going to come out of your mouth are not going to build up and edify, then the scripture said, even a fool is considered wise when he simply holds his peace. That's wisdom too. Sometimes it takes wisdom just to not even have anything to say. As it relates to our family and our brothers and sisters, there are wisdom shows you things. Like let's take Galatians, who was that? Galatians 5. Galatians 6 chapter, when it says, uh, or is it, let's see, well, it's one of them. I don't have my Bible with me right now, but it's one of them. I, I do believe it's Galatians 4 chapter. When you see a brother or a sister, a husband or a wife, a children or an elder child, overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, you who possess wisdom, restore them in the spirit of meekness, Considering yourself first, lest you also be tempted. Now, this is wisdom. When you're going to get wisdom, when you get wisdom, these are the principles that you'll operate in when it comes to your brothers and sisters and when it comes to your, your family that don't know what you know. It said, you'll go into a place of spirituality and wisdom will start discerning what you can what you can say that will become helpful and beneficial and what if you said this this is going to make it worse that's what wisdom do wisdom will draw a line of distinction between what's going to edify and what's going to build up because it says when you see these things happen if somebody is celebrating christmas and you done found out that christmas is pagan it said you who are spiritual you got to restore them in a spirit of meekness considering yourself first so wisdom will make you look at yourself first it'll make you look at yourself in light of how the father dealt with you when you were in the midst of your ignorance did he slap you to the ground or did he just gently and patiently just wait on you to get you better he said now when you start looking at how the father operated with you while you were in the midst of your ignorance he said that is how you restore your brother and you have to do that because if you don't consider the fact that you have been where your brothers are, then you will do things that will cause harm to your brothers. And the Most High is not going to be pleased about that because you are not exercising the same compassion and mercy towards your brothers and sisters that he have had towards you. Shalom, uh, Brother uh, Majors Brown. See, so that is the whole thing. We can't be one-sided. Everything got to be balanced. Yes, these things do happen, but we got to be able to look at, okay, is this a result of wisdom that's causing me grief and causing me sorrow, or is this a result of me operating apart from wisdom outside of my flesh? That's, you know, some of the husbands are just straight out tyrants in their house. It's whatever they say, whatever they say, and there ain't no room for now time by time over the years my, my mm -hmm. wife would tell me that well what make you think you always right well i ain't always right you know what i'm saying <laughs> but the reality is, is that these types of things can happen and so the father give us different ways exercise and wisdom be ye wise as a serpent yet harmless as a dove that's as it relates to doing ministry and wisdom had to go before you because a serpent is charming a serpent ain't somebody that don't nobody want to be associated with a serpent is something that's charming and he's crafty and strategic he goes way before his prey he stalks his prey he gets ahead of his prey and he stalks his prey at the same time that at the appointed time he can strike He's wise, wise as a serpent, but yet gentle as a dove. They will never see you coming if you do things in the proper way. But if you put yourself in the place to where, you know, you're a tyrant or 
Nobody can socialize with you because you got to be right about everything. And you know more Bible than everything. I'm telling you, knowing the Bible don't make you wise. And if you know the Bible and know a lot of scriptures, and but the scriptures not making it to the people that it's meant to make it to, then you are not operating in wisdom. And then we have another, a couple of other brothers that said, man, I'm trying, but I feel like I got a demon on me because every I just can't seem to overcome. Well, that's part of the grief and sorrow process because we're chasing after God's holiness and his righteousness, but we ourselves are of a sinful nature. And Satan, he said, well, what can I say to make Satan leave me alone? There is nothing that you can say. Satan is not going to leave you alone. He is going to bombard you every chance and every opportunity that he gets. And these are, this is why the scripture says with much wisdom is much grief. Because when you have much wisdom to who much is given, much shall be required. You have a greater capacity to affect the lives of many people when you have much wisdom. But for every life that you affect, Satan is going to come out of there like a roaring lion because he aims to stop you from doing it. And one of the ways that he stop us from doing it is plaguing our flesh with all types of things and showing us ourselves that you ain't right. How you going to tell somebody else something? See, all of this is part of it. It's part of the Father's program. You know what I mean? So I wanted to come on here just so that people don't be misunderstood about that right there. Is that, you know, we got to learn how to deal with each other. That's the whole purpose. That's the whole purpose of the wisdom. To be able to deal with each other. To be able to reach the lost. To be able to edify and uh, give reproof to those that uh, you have to use wisdom when you're talking to people. That means that here's wisdom again. Study in what thy shall answer. Okay? You know why you study in what you shall answer? Sometime before you ever get in a situation, wisdom telling you before you ever get in a situation, see the situation in your mind. And then choose your responses carefully. Okay, if this happened, it ain't even happened yet, but just hypothetically, if this happened, how would I respond to it? Would I be shaken up by it? Or would I respond in order? Okay, now which way, did, if I responded, which way would be pleasing to the Lord? Well, that way ain't going to be pleasing to the Lord. This way would be pleasing to the Lord. See, I done already rehearsed. Wisdom that made me rehearse a scenario that ain't even took place yet. Because when it takes place, I can respond now in a way that will be pleasing to the Most High. Because the scripture said, I should study in how I should answer. I don't just get blindsided by nothing and just let anything fly out of my mouth. That's wisdom too, okay? So when we deal with some of our family members, it would do us good to just think about scenarios that ain't even happened yet so that we can develop the right response. You know what I mean? It's almost like a man that's in an affair and his woman is cheating on him. And in his mind, he always thinking about it. But then he got to say, well, Man, if I see that dude, what am I going to do? What's going to be my reaction if I catch him together? Well, in one side of his head, his reaction is going to be, I'm going to beat him up and I'm going to slap her. I'm going to do what I'm going to perform. But then there's another side of his mind that say he should do something else if he's going to do something that's going to be pleasing to the most high. But when you allow yourself to see and rehearse those things in your mind before you ever encounter them, you end up learning how to respond in a way to be pleasing to the Lord. And that is because you are operating off of principles of wisdom. Okay? So sometimes these things will do us good when we go to visit our families. Well, I know, I know my auntie, she always going to bring it up. That I'm a Muslim or I'm, I'm something. So, so let me deal with that now and see how am I going to handle it? How am I going to deal with it? And then I can pick and choose the right scenario that when I deal with that, you know what? The, the scriptures say this is out of the book of wisdom. Words spoken in due seasons are like apples of, uh, are like apples of gold in pitchers of silver. You see, 
that's words in due season. You know, them is rehearsed scenarios that you already picked. That's that's that serpent that's wise. He going before the thing even happened and finding the right response that when he do respond to it, it is so impactful that the glory of, of the Most High is all the way out there being shown. Okay? So, like we said, knowledge and uh, wisdom produces grief and sorrow while we are in our pursuit of it and while we are learning. But once we get wisdom, now we have to start operating in those principles because now your wisdom is existing for one reason. That is to do the will of the Most High and the Father's will is that all men will come to repentance. You understand? That none will perish. We know that it's not going to be like that because all men are not going to embrace what it is that you have to offer. But when we do what the scriptures say and make it strategic, wise as a serpent, but remember that we got to be harmless, okay? You can't have both of them. You got to have both of them. They're complete package. You can't be wise as a serpent, but then end up harming what you're stalking. You understand what I'm saying? So we can't do that. And you can't be a tyrant. And when you're dealing with people that don't have that understanding, that wisdom will cause you to go and pray and ask the Father. I don't know how many times we have had to go back about certain situations when it seemed like people ain't never going to get it. It's not that they're not going to get it. And every single time I would pray about something, the Father would never show me what they were doing. He would always show me what I was doing or what I wasn't doing. Well, try this then. Here's another approach. Have You, you know what? You go and change the tactic. And then go right back using your wisdom. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we can't be to the point where you want to give up on family. You want to cut family off. You know what I mean? Husbands and wives want to get divorced. Well, my husband, he ain't in truth. I've been in truth for two years and he ain't in truth. And Well, you can't make him be in truth neither. But you're, if, you, if you are wise and operate according to the scripture, then the father honor your obedience and then allow you to become a light to your husband. But but just because he ain't in truth, that don't give you no right to run away because that is not allowing wisdom to operate. Patience must have its perfect work. That's witness too. To count it all joy when you fall into different trials and different situations because these trials and situations are causing us to learn how to be patient and then learn how to watch and see the most high do his handiwork that at the end of the day we will be to walk away with something that we didn't have at first that will make us better off as we go to deal with our brothers and sisters okay here's wisdom again second chapter of romans third second third chapter yeah, sec third chapter of Romans. Uh, well, second chapter. Yes, it's, I'm sure it's second chapter. Whoever, whosoever thou art, O man that judges another man, uh, wherein that you have been guilty of the same things, you, you know you bring you bring condemnation on yourself. Now, hear what that means. That means that if the Father have delivered me from something, I should be grateful from that. So when I go to deal with my brothers, I have to be careful. Because I myself was once guilty of what I'm dealing with my brother on. You understand what I'm saying? So I can't come with him with a heavy hand. You know what I mean? And it's something that I used to do. Okay, let's give you an example. Okay, N nine out of ten of the men that are past the age of 30 have been fornicators. And then we come in the truth or we get wives and then we understand the sanctity of marriage. But now you have to deal with some of your brothers according to the scriptures. We're to start talking about extortioners and fornicators and adulterers and nobody going to inherit. And now you got to deal with your brothers and sisters on this issue right here. But it's an issue that you yourself was guilty of. So I can't go. I can't go over there. Thou art inexcusable, old man, whoever you are, that passes judgment upon another brother.
Seeing you've been guilty of the same things, you fall into condemnation yourself. So you have to develop a way that you can use, considering yourself first, that you can use your situation when you were lost at that particular point. Be able to identify with a person's weakness and that gives you something that you can use as a means to edify them and build them up instead of just flat out telling them that they wrong. Be able to confess the fact, you know what, man, I used to struggle in that area so bad, man. I said I wasn't going to do it no more. Matt, next thing you know, I'm right back in the mud. It was rough. It was rough. And man, I know it's rough. It's going to be rough. It's not going to be easy because you're chasing after what the Father means for you. But you just stay prayerful, you know what I mean? And keep on trying and you can do it. And, and that will work because that is the same thing that the Father, that's the same process that the Father brought all of us through. And we got to learn to deal with our brothers and sisters on that same type of level. That's if you're going to be operating <coughs> in wisdom. In wisdom. And that's the truth be told. We got a lot of our brothers out here. As soon as you learn one or two things out of the scripture, you out there, you got a sword, a baseball bat, you understand, an AK-47, a double barrel shotgun. You're looking to blast off anybody that you can find that ain't lined up with what it is that you think just because it's in the scripture. You understand what I'm saying? But just because it's in the scripture don't give you a right to deal with your brothers and sisters in a way that does not edify. When you have wisdom out there, even when you're rebuking somebody, it is put in such a way. Let, let me show you something. I got some brothers and sisters out there, and I know that I, I know they don't mind me mentioning their name, okay? But I got a brother out there. Bless his heart, man. Uh, I'm, I'm falling in love with these brothers. I have a brother out there, and... And uh, Tony Poe, I hope you don't mind me mentioning your name, but I just want to show you something that my brother had a question on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, and it prompted a big conversation. You understand what I'm saying? But I knew that it wasn't no whole lot going to come out of it because it was like some sarcasm. And even though he admitted to that, but I tiptoed behind him on this messenger, and, and I just told him, I said, brother, you know I love you, don't you? But I, what I want you to understand, your light is burning too bright, and the Father have put too much in you. You have too much wisdom to even allow yourself to open up a thing like this. So you can't open up nothing like that. You got to challenge your brothers to rise above mediocre conversation because of what you've been equipped with. And my brother, he said, you know what? I hate to say this word, but that's what he could be said, Elder, you know, you're right. And I didn't mean that. It was just poking fun, but it was just sarcasm. You know what I mean? And you know what? But I wanted him to understand that with the wisdom that the Father give you, you can't waste no time. You understand what I'm saying? You got to go after your brothers and every, 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 every word that comes out of your mouth has to count. It has to count. You understand? Now, if we, if we can't communicate with our brothers, who can we communicate with? But as I'm saying, is that before we open up our mouths where our other brothers are concerned, we need to think and consider ourselves how we would want somebody to deal with us if it was us in that position. I don't want, no, I don't want my brothers coming back dealing with me harsh. They could see me fall at any given minute because I'm human. I'm living in the flesh. The devil attacks me too. But if my brothers did see me fall, I would want my brothers to come and pick me up and have compassion on me. Come on, Elder, get on up, man. Get on up. You can't stay where you at. Get on up, man. You, you get on up. Let's pray for you. Let's pray mm -hmm. for you. And we go, you know what? That's wisdom, okay? Wisdom kept Israel winning the battle. When Moses couldn't hold his arms up no longer to, to hold the staff up and his arms started to fall, Moses, he didn't reach out and tell nobody, hey, man, I'm, I'm getting too weak. They knew what was happening because every time they seen his arm drop, Israel would start losing. And then wisdom said, hey, man, we got to get over here. We got to prop this brother's arms up. 
Because every time his arms drop, they start losing the battle. But long as his arms is up, and that's how we have to be with each other. We have to learn how to prop each other's arms up. Because when the world see Israel operate, in the fullness of the Father's wisdom, there will not be one devil in hell that could step in our direction, come against us in no type of way. You're talking about even these wicked heathens that's out here harming our brothers. The time is going to come that when we stand up on our feet in the fullness of the Father's wisdom, we won't even have to lift a sword or a gun because Wisdom makes a man's face to shine and the opposition will see something burning in your face and be terrified to come anywhere near it. Some of you brothers out there know what I'm talking about, that the Father have given you wisdom. The opposition won't even approach you. Oh, they'll approach somebody else. They'll approach somebody else with a bunch of nonsense, but they won't even come in your direction. And you know why? Because the Bible says that wisdom maketh a man's face to shine. That means that when you have it, you got a glow on you that the world of wickedness sees and they know. Don't go over there messing with that one right there. Don't do it. And so, <laughs> so we got to, uh, yeah, we got to, we got to get it together. So brothers and sisters, if you can experience that thing with your family, with your wife, with your children, where it seemed like everything that fell apart and you can't get nothing right, then that, that you, you're on the right road, but the Father don't mean to leave you right there, okay? Because what the Father is going to give you, He is going to give you so that it can become a blessing and a benefit to everybody around you. And if you think you have it, but that's not what's happening, you not become a benefit and a blessing to everybody around you, you don't have it yet. And you need to go get back in the trenches, get back on your face, pray a little bit more, ask for a little bit more understanding. And so, but by all means, stay in the fight. There is much to be covered on this subject as it deals with wisdom, okay? But remember, wisdom, if we're going to get wisdom, you have to hear the instructions first. Shalom, saints.